Change the way you age with M Drive. Supplements for guys who refuse to let age beat them. More energy, more lean muscle. Here's hockey legend Jeremy Roenick talking about his M Drive experience. I've taken a lot of different things throughout my life, but I think now I just turned 50 years old. M Drive has really given me a really confident feeling, feeling 50. I will tell you, I'm still on the golf course and I'm still playing with the young punks and I'm still hitting it as far as the young guys and I'm still beating the young guys. <laughs> Your mind is going to work better. You're going to, you're going to have more fun. Your workouts are going to be better. And M Drive has just given me that confidence inside my body and inside my mind because I look better and I feel better. I don't feel 50. I don't act 50. For me, uh, 50 is the new 30, and I'm looking to make it to 100. I just refuse to grow old. Energy, strength, drive. M Drive supplements for driven men. Go to mdriveformen.com. Use code POD20 for 20% off your first purchase. Don't let age beat you. Visit mdriveformen.com. Hello, thanks for tuning in to another episode of NCIA's Cannabis Industry Voice on Cannabis Radio. I'm your host, Bethany Moore, and I am the Deputy Director of Communications at the National Cannabis Industry Association. We have an awesome episode planned today, and thanks to Bridge West CPAs for sponsoring this very special episode. Bridge West CPAs is one of the first accounting firms in the world to focus solely on the cannabis and hemp industries in the U.S. And today I'm delighted to introduce my guest, Governor Jared Polis, born and raised in Colorado. He's an entrepreneur, education leader, and public servant. Prior to becoming governor, Polis brought medical experts, advocates, attorneys, and scientists to Washington, D.C. to legitimize cannabis legalization in the national conversation and led the way for new market opportunities for agriculture while serving as the congressman for Colorado's second congressional district. Welcome to the show today, Governor. It's a pleasure to be with you. Wonderful. So let's jump in and just briefly, let's talk about your background and how it inspired and pushed you into serving in government and a bit about your values uh, that inspired you also to serve in these roles? Well, thank you, Beth- Bethany. Um, you know, I uh, was an entrepreneur in the private sector and uh, started a number of tech companies, really enjoyed that work, uh, proflowers.com, co-founded bluemountain.com. I started an internet access provider and uh, loved, loved growing those companies to scale. And uh, really, uh, after I had sold several of them, I, I wanted to get back. And I just said, you know what? I could do more companies and that's fun and maybe I'll do it someday. But it is more exciting for me to try to make our state, our country, and our world a better place. And so uh, I, start, I started off on serving six years on the State Board of Education, which is a part-time job. I was able to stay in business during that. And I uh, started a couple of charter schools, which was uh, kind of uh, active um, social entrepreneurship. I was superintendent of a charter school, grew that. It was a lot of fun. And uh, then decided to go full time and run for Congress in in 2008. And obviously, one of those issues that um, that I, I care about and, and wanted to work on was really just a rationalization of the country's marijuana policy and uh, recognition of the failed policy of prohibition. And we had an initiative in Colorado, which I was supported regulate, you know, marijuana like alcohol. And when you look at, you know, when you look at marijuana and you look at alcohol and, and you say, why is there such a different, a vastly different regulatory scheme for both of them, even though in many ways, alcohol can have worse impacts in terms of both its addictive qualities and uh, the dangers you might be in if you're temporarily inebriated, like driving. So, uh, you know, it was uh, I was glad to go to Congress to fight for that. I started the Cannabis Caucus. I was one of the early voices there to uh, start moving the national discussion towards a rationalization of our policies. Absolutely. Well, we at NCIA and all of our members are um, very appreciative of all your efforts there. So uh, that's a great background. And currently you're sitting as governor of Colorado since 2019. So, yes, this is a cannabis industry podcast and you are a wonderful cannabis industry and policy reform champion. So let's talk about these issues, starting with why further that you support these issues, even as a representative in the House, as you mentioned, before becoming governor, you co-founded the first Congressional Cannabis Caucus 
in 2017. So let's, let's dive a little more into your reason for being a vocal supporter of cannabis reform when uh, even just a few years ago, it was still a very fringe issue. You know, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in individual freedoms and people's ability to choose and live their own lives. And, uh, you know, this is a real opportunity to, to break through on this issue. I think really we need to fundamentally look at how we can empower people to make their own decisions rather than have government make them for them. And I think uh, marijuana was really able to break into the mainstream because a lot of the noise around reefer madness was simply based on fiction rather than, than fact. And so uh, I got to work creating the fertile ground that a regulated, you know, cannabis industry needs to thrive. And, and uh, obviously in Colorado, we got to see a lot of the benefits from the growing industry, hospitality, tourism, consumer services, uh, putting illegal drug dealers out of business. And, you know, from from really all, all consumer goods are, are, are areas that there's been a lot of growth. We did cannabis delivery in Colorado. I got to sign that bill. We did a uh, retail marijuana hospitality where there's there can be uh, testing rooms nearby. And it's really about striking the balance to encourage innovation. I really have so much admiration for some of those early entrepreneurs who uh, were even facing potential legal threats when they got into business. And there's those who still do. But I think we, what we need to do is lay a strong foundation empower people to make choices, allow businesses to grow and thrive. And I'm really excited that Colorado is really the the, the center of, of the cannabis industry. It's really um, a great place to be, a great place to have your company. We're also a center for whole hemp cultivation. Uh, and, you know, I, I think the states that still have illegal marijuana, I would say that unregulated marijuana is still dangerous in those states. It's a, it's a fringe, dangerous way to approach this. Uh, just as uh, banning alcohol was for the entire country in the 1920s. And there's still, you know, dry counties to this day in some states. Yeah, yep, that's true. And and hey, how about all the jobs that are being created in the states that legalize and the tax revenues that are realized as well? It's, it's all gravy, I think. Um, so let's dive more into your efforts over the years. Um, as you mentioned, you introduced the Regulate Marijuana Like Alcohol Act many times during your time serving in Congress. Uh, so the Regulate Marijuana Like Alcohol Act would have descheduled cannabis entirely. So now, fast forward, we have the CAOA, the Cannabis Administration and Opportunity Act that has been introduced in the House of Representatives, which has similar goals. Um, <laughs> that being said, our industry is still dealing with uh, banking issues and tax issues because of 280E and the IRS code. Um, so there's legislation to fix those, but those are smaller incremental moves, right? But the CAOA, it's much more comprehensive. So there was a letter that you had sent to Congress in support of this new bill, the CAOA. Can you talk a bit about that, please? Well, first of all, look, you got to you got to do what you can get done. And, and absolutely, you know, regulating marijuana like alcohol nationally uh, is great. I think that's where we're going. But in the meantime, uh, I think the votes are there to get done the banking uh, and, and IRS code 280 fix. And I wrote to uh, Senator Schumer and Senator Booker and Senator Wyden saying, look, we're all thrilled with this long term solution, but don't let that stand in the way of what you can do now if you have the votes. And they do have the votes and, and these provide immediate relief. Um, they, they help us move forward with social equity. They um, really endorse a regular use of the banking system. They reduce the cost of capital. Uh, reduce the cost of business, help further drive drug dealers out of business by allowing deduction for normal business expenses on the legal side. So, you know, we need to get done what we can get done, you know, and, and, and let that kind of break the dam and then move forward with more later. Absolutely. So, I, I yeah, we're grateful that you're spreading the word amongst other members of Congress to to push this this legislation forward. Um, it's it's inspiring to see businesses thrive. And it's unfortunate to see um, these things in place like banking and taxes that undermine uh, our industry's success as well. So let's talk more about your efforts over the years. Um, as mentioned, you introduced the Regulate Marijuana Like Alcohol Act many times during your time in Congress, which, which would have descheduled cannabis entirely. And now fast forward, 
the CAOA, the Cannabis Administration and Opportunity Act, has been introduced in the Senate, which has similar goals. Um, but also our industry is still dealing with these issues like access to banking services and being overly taxed by 280E of the IRS tax code. So there's legislation to deal with those, but those are incremental smaller moves, right? But the CAOA is much more comprehensive. Could you talk a bit more about the letter you sent to Congress with your feedback about the CAOA? Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I think there's some overlap, but it's, it's, it's definitely a little bit more hands-on. Our cannabis business office is really part of our multi-year effort to encourage innovation and entrepreneurship, to address social equity. Uh, we had an accelerator program to uh, help uh, incubate new businesses. We um, created definitions around social equity. I did a uh, two sets of mass pardons of everybody who had been convicted of uh, marijuana possession offenses. I think there's a total of about 4,000 people wow. that we got it off their record, um, you That's know, great. so they could be in, in any business they chose, including the marijuana business. And in 2021, we envisioned the creation of a cannabis business office at our Ec Office of Economic Development and International Trade. That's kind of our state equivalent of the SBA. And uh, the purpose of that is really three areas. One is loans to social equity licensees to help get the seed capital. Second is uh, sort of micro grants on social equity to support innovation and job creation. And third is supporting the business owners through really hands-on technical assistance uh, and, and helping them get there. That, that, that you know, a lot of uh, services at the SBA were unavailable, are unavailable because of the federal prohibition. So we had to really say, look, we can be hands-on, we can help you with the inaction of the federal government. We just took it upon ourselves as a state to offer technical assistance, low-cost loans, uh, to help meet our social equity goals. Wonderful, wonderful. Thanks for the breakdown there. All right, let's take our first commercial break and then we'll be right back on NCIA's Cannabis Industry Voice to chat more with Governor Jared Polis. Stay tuned, we'll be right back. NCIA's Cannabis Industry Voice will return once we give a voice to our sponsors. All right, we're back on NCIA's Cannabis Industry Voice on Cannabis Radio. And I'm your host, Bethany Moore, chatting with Governor Jared Polis from the state of Colorado, a cannabis reform champion in Congress formerly as well. Let's uh, talk more about Colorado. Um, it's a great state. I'm happy to live here. It's beautiful. Um, this was one of the states several years ago that has been on the forefront of both medical many years ago and adult use cannabis about eight or nine years ago. Uh, let's talk about some of the successes and maybe even lessons learned that uh, the federal government nationally could look to Colorado for as, as they move forward uh, toward this journey of federal legalization. Well, replacing prohibition with sensible regulation simply works. And we learned that with alcohol in her 100 years ago, uh, getting the, the, the gangs and the drug dealers out of it, starting empowering legitimate businesses. Uh, we also saw that when there was the, uh, the vape crisis in 2019, the states that did not have legal use of cannabis had many severe health impacts and were devastated. Here in Colorado, we almost entirely avoided that devastation because of our health and safety regulations. And so, uh, you know, a lot of the fears of those who opposed it didn't manifest, like legalization did not lead to more underage use. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, and really it allows us to really get, get a handle on the safety issues around marijuana, especially in this day and age where fentanyl is raging. Uh, it, it's, you know, it's really dangerous in the states that um, have illegal marijuana operations where it's much more likely to be laced with fentanyl. So we also get a lot of benefits, uh, jobs, tax revenue, um, reducing, you know, uh, people going into legitimate businesses rather than a life of crime. And uh, these are all important factors. So I think it's, it's, uh, it's been a great experience here. We're happy to share that with any state. And, and I think more and more states are, are uh, re removing uh, outdated rules and laws in different ways, shapes, or forms. Sure, there's still a lot of these uh, stigmas, and you had mentioned reefer madness earlier in, in the show. And I think that's so true that 
um, the, the perceptions and stigmas of cannabis are just completely outdated. And, and those that are, you know, serving in these roles that would have the opportunity to decide otherwise really just need to be educated. Um, and I'll talk a bit about NCIA's lobby days later and how we, uh, do our best to contribute toward that education effort as well. So um, I wonder what, what, what has it been like watching the industry, but also the conversation in Congress, um, you know, even here in Colorado evolve, um, the, the Regulate Marijuana Like Alcohol Act was a pretty concise, simple bill. And, and now we have, as I mentioned before, more bills out there like the Safe Banking Act uh, the MORE Act, the Marijuana Opportunity Reinvestment and Expungement Act, um, and the CAOA, which I mentioned earlier, and the States Reform Act. Wow, that's that's a lot of uh, that's a lot of legislation related to cannabis in in Congress now. Um, considering just a few years ago we just had you know one or two small bills. What's that been like for you um, being involved, watching that evolution? Well, look, I mean, again, we, you got to get done what you can. And, and you know, the danger is getting nothing done when you have an opportunity to do something, for instance, around banking, which is really uh, a major uh, danger and threat. It's a serious economic and public safety threat, lack of access to banking. And I was really proud to support uh, SAFE Act as a congressman, formerly as governor. Uh, congressman Ed Perlmutter from Colorado has pushed the SAFE Banking Act. It's passed the House six times on a strong bipartisan vote. And uh, we just need to get the Senate to take up that legislation. Um, I, I understand across different state legislatures, there's over 1,400 pieces of cannabis legislation. As I mentioned here in Colorado, we recently added delivery. I signed that bill. Um, we're, we're working on additional ways to uh, support the, the industry in a safe way. But I think fundamentally, um, we have to take this opportunity to, to get something done rather than just talk about it. The danger is uh, you know, you keep on talking about it. Maybe someday you're going to win. But in the meantime, there's a lot of collateral damage along the way. So I hope at this point, uh, the SAFE Act, the banking, the 280 e-fix, these are things they need to do nationally. And that'll help pave the way towards uh, achieving the goal of regulating marijuana like alcohol. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, having delivery added um, here in Colorado has been wonderful. And I, I, I think that that was something perhaps that may have been born out of uh, the the COVID-19 pandemic that we all faced as well when cannabis was thankfully declared an essential business in this state as, as well as many others. Um, so seeing all of these opportunities, uh, delivery creates a whole nother job sector opportunity for people to start small businesses and work for small businesses. Um, so that's fantastic as well. Um, I, I would like to talk about a little bit of storytelling. Um, obviously, NCIA has been a supporter of your, your work in Congress and as governor. Uh, so let's, let's take a little blast from the past here. Um, so Ian Sieb is a former cannabis industry executive who also served on the NCIA board of directors for seven years. He went with us to Washington, D.C. for our annual lobby days every year. Uh, but in the past couple of years, he has changed his job and is now uh, your special advisor on cannabis as well. I just think that's a great story arc to see someone who worked in the industry um, from medical laws and is now um, in, a, in a position to advise the governor on um, on pushing our industry forward and helping it thrive as well. Um, there's also a story uh, related here all the way back to 2013 in the spring for, for this Lobby Days event that I mentioned where NCIA members, business owners from all over the country actually um, fly into Washington, D.C., and we have meetings with members of Congress over the course of a couple of days. And Ian uh, met with you when you were a member of Congress to talk about the Safe Banking Act, the Secure and Fair Enforcement Banking Act. Then he gets back from our awesome trip to DC, checks his mail, and what is there? There's a letter from the bank and it's bad news. <laughs> so 
um, having just met you in Washington, D.C., he reached out to you when you were a congressman and um, you you helped. You, you wrote a letter to Ian's bank talking about this banking issue and your support of the cannabis industry. So, again, there's this really beautiful long arch story here of a cannabis operator turned advisor to the governor. And unfortunately, that was 10 years ago almost. So we are still working on getting banking passed for cannabis. Do you, do you remember that, Governor Polis? Absolutely. So I, you know, it's, it's really exciting. To, I, at that time, I had no idea that Ian would run our cannabis policy, right? I didn't even think I'd, you know, be governor or run for governor or anything like that. But then when I did, and I was looking around for, hey, we need somebody at a high level to help us move this issue forward. Um, Ian was interested and, and now we've come full circle and he's heading up cannabis policy for the state of Colorado. Uh, he gets to be on the other side now and see a little bit about how hard it is sometimes to make progress. But uh, I'm really excited to have him and, and really his experience in the industry is a great asset to our administration in really addressing the real life issues that the industry faces. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a that's a great story um, as well. So, all right, let's take our final commercial break here, and then we'll come right back and wrap up our conversation with Governor Jared Polis from Colorado. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. NCIA's Cannabis Industry Voice will return once we give a voice to our sponsors. All right, we're back on NCIA's Cannabis Industry Voice on Cannabis Radio. I'm your host, Bethany Moore, with the National Cannabis Industry Association, chatting with Governor Jared Polis from the state of Colorado. So we covered a lot of legislation uh, from the Safe Banking Act to the Moore Act, States Reform Act, and just the history of all this legislation that's been churning through, through the federal government and Congress. And the House of Representatives has really been more helpful um, in passing some of this legislation. I think safe banking has passed six or seven times now, which I think you already mentioned, um, but it, it tends to just kind of get stuck on the Senate side. And that's not just cannabis issues. It seems that legislation across the board is just bottlenecking over there in, in the Senate. But as governor now, uh, you have a little bit of a different role. So uh, I understand that you wrote some official letters to ranking members of Congress, um, meaning they likely serve on banking and finance committees and so on, um, in support of the Safe Banking Act. Um, hey, it's gone six or seven times through the House, so there there is support, bipartisan support. So this letter that you wrote is also a bipartisan letter urging Congress to include the Safe Banking Act in the final 2022, the National Defense Authorization Act for the fiscal year. Could you tell me more about that letter? So first of all, we were able to get Republican and Democratic governors to sign it. Uh, governors, it was really a no-brainer for many of them. Um, many of the states uh, only had medical or CBD but it was just obvious. Governors tend to be very practical. They're like, yeah, if it's legal, why can't they go to have banking? So if we can get that kind of response from Republican and Democratic governors, um, I hope that it's really a strong message to senators to bring it forward and make it, for, you know, make it pass and just get it done. Um, passing the Safe Banking Act and other legislation that helps uh, all the businesses that touch uh, cannabis gain access to financial support uh, is critical. And every other regulated industry by states has that. And, uh, you know, I, I think that hopefully the Congress will heed what the governors agreed, you know, RD, Republican didn't matter. They, they said, of course, it's obvious. Let's just get it done. Sure. Yeah, that makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks again for penning all these letters. Um, I, I think having someone who has served in the house and sees how it works from that end. And now in your role as governor, you're, you're able to really tell these members of Congress, this is what works for my state. Listen to uh, listen to the experience of, of someone that's seen it succeed and knows the ins and outs of how to do it right and how not to do it. 
Um, so yeah, let's get it done. I couldn't couldn't agree with you more as well. Um, yeah. So as we're wrapping up the show here, um, you know I love fun stories. So I, I Michelle Rutter Freeberg and Michael Correa, who are our lobbyists um, here at NCIA, they they told me about a story they heard. Uh, some kind of exchange between you and former representative John Fleming about cannabis and crawfish. <laughs> could you could you tell me about that one? I got to hear this. Well, this was a, yeah, a funny story. So John Fleming was this older representative, kind of my parents' generation. Um, he was a doctor uh, from Louisiana, and uh, he was going after Colorado for legalizing marijuana on the floor. He was just like saying, you know, it's it's, it's and, and, you know, it's ridiculous. And how can they do it? And, they, you know, it's un, it's dangerous. And how can they let people do it? And I got up and I got to give her I replied. I said, you know, what what, what are you talking about? You know, like, I, I don't care what you do in Louisiana. Why do you care what we're doing in Colorado? You guys eat, you know, fried uh, crawfish and that's not healthy for your heart. But you don't see me out here blasting crawfish. Uh, and, uh, it kind of went viral, um, you know, but it was like making the point that like, I sure, I don't, you don't, no one's saying you have to smoke marijuana, but like, why do you care that that's what we do in Colorado? It's going well here. And, um, you know, people, we, people know it's not the healthiest thing to smoke a cigarette or smoke marijuana or even drink, but like, if you do them, you know, occasionally or, or rarely, there's not major health impacts from them. And, and I'm sure eating fried crawfish all the time will clog your arteries and give you a heart attack and you'll probably die sooner. But like, you, you know, we're not about to ban it anytime soon. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, no legislation to, to make crawfish illegal for sure. <laughs> I, I should have introduced a follow-up bill to like ban crawfish in Louisiana. Uh, you know, see see how they they felt about that. <laughs> oh, and uh, the state of was it Kansas was also uh, at one point threatening to what sue Colorado for for legalizing cannabis as well. Well, they call um, them crawdads in in Kansas, is my understanding. But um, yeah, they they did. They they uh, they they were they were upset with the name. You know, it's mind your own business, right? Mind your own business, and and uh, no one's gonna give you trouble if you don't give anybody else trouble. Yeah, what happened to small government, right? Exactly. <laughs> well, Governor Polis, it has been an honor to interview you today on the show, and and all of the team at NCIA and all of our members are appreciative of all of your support of the cannabis industry and movement over the years. So thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to speak with us today. I really appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Have a great day, Bethany. Take care. You as well, Governor. And thanks to all of our listeners for tuning in to another episode of NCIA's Cannabis Industry Voice. Until next time. The opinions expressed on this CannabisRadio.com program are those of the guests and hosts and do not necessarily reflect those of the staff and management of CannabisRadio.com. Any rebroadcast, republication, or retransmission of this program without proper consent is prohibited.